We are here because we are dedicated to helping the entire CrossFit community. Determined to elevate coaches, box owners, athletes, and everything in between, we believe that this mission will begin right here, right now. While this time and this goal begins with you, our hope is that you take this fire ignited within you and weave it into your own life with the same unrelenting passion to give those you have the privilege of coming in contact with the best hour of their day. Well, welcome to the show, Brian. You and I go back almost five years now. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, it's a pleasure to be on here and uh, love your podcast. So excited to discuss some health topics today. Yeah, you know, you, you, you reached out yesterday, said, what are we talking about? You are one of those people that once we hit record, we can really talk about anything in the health and fitness world. And you have your, you know, your podcast, the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. You were just telling me before we hit record, it's, I'm assuming it's okay to say that uh, Mr. Rob Wolf is yeah. on your show. Has that been released yet, that episode? It has not been released. Uh, oh. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It, today. <laughs> okay. Well, we're I don't know what... today. This will be out in a, in a week or two. Okay. So, so, so. so people can go check it out. So it, Rob Wolf, OG in the CrossFit world. But if they want to check it out, Brian Grin is your website, gryn.com. And then, you, you know, obviously just click on the top is the podcast. But you've had some really awesome guests as far as you know, nutrition. And I believe when I was on, I mean, look, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. Episode 40, <laughs> episode 40 is probably your most downloaded episode. Um, it's up there. It's up there. I mean, you have such a following that it was just automatic. So I hope I was better than Sean Baker. And, you know, I hope <laughs> Rob Wolf doesn't take the top prize. Um, Actually, but- if you really want to know my top down, do you want to know my top downloaded one? Yeah, of course. Uh, He's got a big following is Dr. Ted Naiman. Dr. Ted Naiman, who is she? Yeah. It's a guy. <laughs> I'm joking. But yeah. <laughs> that, no, you have some great people. And actually, a mutual friend, and I did want to ask you about this. You've had Doug Holt on. Um, oh, yeah. Right. So that's how you and I got to know each other. Doug Holt was actually our special guest yesterday in our graduate program. So we have Affiliate University where we coach CrossFit affiliates. And then when they graduate that, they go on to grad school, you know, just like the, uh, the real world. And we, we try to bring in some cool thought leaders and Doug was one of them. And you and I met through Doug's mastermind group. Like we were saying, probably five years ago, I was in Florida. Um, to, be- yeah. Before we talk about nutrition, a- as an entrepreneur and, you know, in the virtual space for as long as you've been, how important is it for you to have a mentor or mentors? I think the more I've been in this space, the more I realize that you really need that. Um, Because, you know, everyone needs a coach, I think, in certain areas of their lives, at least for a period of time. And um, yeah, Doug, you know, joining Doug's group and meeting other entrepreneurs like yourself is great. And that's one part of it, I think, is just networking and meeting other like-minded individuals. And then the second step would be actually finding a coach, whether it's a business coach, health coach, to hold you accountable um, because we all fall off track in, in different areas of our lives. And there's so much information out there. I think more and more now, it's, it's that much more important to have someone to sort of um, make sure you don't sort of veer off track and find something else to do. And um, yeah, so hope that answered your question. But yeah. Uh-huh. You know, I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, you can live in like on a, what's the expression? You live on an island or live in a bubble. In a bubble, know, like, yeah. They're the same thing, but there's. Well, we all lived in a bubble for about a year and a half, hopefully. <laughs> we did, we did. Some say I still live in a bubble, but yeah. so, you know, as entrepreneurs, you, you, you can you know, live, you know, this life and you're like, no one gets me. No one else is doing this. And then that's not true, right? People don't get you. I mean, do you have the same issue we have? Like people come to your house and don't understand you work from home. I think, well, it's become more of a norm to work from home. That I think, very true. right. So, so I think like two years, three years ago, uh, 
if you said you worked from home, they would be like really intrigued and wonder what, you know, what are you doing? Maybe you're like dealing drugs out of your basement or something. Yeah. Uh, but now I think it's just, you know, when you say, Oh, I work from home, they're like, Oh, that's great. You know, I, or I work virtually. Um, cause a lot of my consults now are done virtually. So, um, I think people understand you more. I think actually people envy you. I mean, I don't know. I mean, not to go into an office. I don't, I don't mind that at all or commuting and things like that. There does take, um, a deal, uh, a, a lot of self-discipline I've, I found I, and, and just making sure that, you know, you're productive, um, in certain times of the day. And so it, yeah, it takes discipline, but once you get the hang of it, it's enjoyable. I'm always, but I'm always fascinated about in talking with other entrepreneurs because of that, because I think it, you know, anything social media these days, very rarely do people put out their failures or where they stumble. It's all very, look at my best. Here's my one rep max and here's this and here's that. And I think entrepreneurs are guilty of it as well. And yeah. like, you know, we don't mention like, that give you a perfect example. It's like nine o'clock today. I woke up at seven and I like, I feel like I, I between seven and nine when we we're recording, I was like, I'm going to get so much done. Like right. you have no idea. Like this is going to be the most productive day ever. And now it's like nine, 12. And I, this is how unproductive I am. I like made a, it's not a Keurig. It's a Nespresso, right? Like mm -hmm. I didn't even get to the point that I got to make my coffee the way I, like, it was just like, what, what do you have days like that? Where you're just like on defense? Yes. Yes. We're like, who knows something comes like I just moved to a new house or something comes up, you got workers coming and then you, you had all this stuff planned to do in the morning and you look and it's, you know, one, two o'clock. I mean, I really try to value my mornings and um, I think I've gotten up earlier and earlier as I've gotten older because that's when I'm most productive. And I think it's important to find areas of the, or parts of the day where you can be most productive. And then obviously they're going to have your days where, you know, you don't get as much done as you'd like. But, um, but yes, I do have days when I look back, I go, what did I do today? <laughs> so what happened? Yeah. I, I'm trying to be, you know, the guy that values their morning and, and I do, but what does that look like for you? I mean, you say getting, you're getting up earlier. That's something I see a lot. I mean, I think it wasn't Gary V, but Gary V kind of made it popular. Jocko came in the four thirty pictures. Where's the balance? This is, I think, where people lose sight. And I posted something not too long ago on my Instagram about you need to sleep more than you need this workout. Mm. Where's the balance of, okay, I need sleep. Like sleep is the most undervalued commodity out there, in my opinion. And I need to get work done or I need to get this workout. Like, But if I get up early and lack this sleep, you know, you know where's, where's the balance there? And what do you do to mitigate that? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, you speaking of Rob Wolf, I, I asked him at the end, what's the one thing uh, that people need to do to get their bodies back? And he was like, sleep. <laughs> uh, and we talked a few minutes about sleep. So you bring okay, up a good... Yeah, check that. That comes out today. My, I will, when we're recording. What time do yeah. you release your episode? Yeah, no, they are out, it's out already. I mean, yeah, oh. I, can't, I think, yeah, 6 a.m. I, I release them every time. It's on your website. That's where I was... That's where I was looking, but oh uh, yeah, yeah, my website's getting revamped a little bit, so you're yeah, you can go to just iTunes or Spotify. It'll be on there. Very cool. Um, so yeah, what did, what did he say? And what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, so um, yeah, obviously sleep is a huge, like the number one health principle and underrated, like you mentioned. Um, but also value, you know, getting being productive in the mornings, right? So you know, you know, getting up, I think the key is finding what your sleep window is like, what is the ideal sleep for you? And it takes time to figure that out, but you might have to just go to bed earlier. Now there's some people who work really good at night, but that's not me. So I find myself going to bed around probably 10, 10 30 and oh, getting up. What's that? That's not unreasonable. Some people are like, you know, 8 PM. Oh, yeah, maybe no, in, maybe in five years <laughs> if we yeah. do this interview, I'll be getting up earlier and earlier. But right now we're 10, 10, 30. And, you know, I think getting up, you know, getting up in, in the window that works well for you. I mean, for me, I sort of know seven to eight hours is ideal for me. 
And, um, so yeah, I mean, it's tough. You sell people that get up early and get work done in the morning, but I think you just got to start going to bed earlier. Um, so, I mean, I get up and go for a walk. That's my big thing. First thing. First thing. Yeah. Well, I have two dogs. Yeah. What time does that usually look like? Probably around six. So 10, 10, 30. So you're getting the seven to eight hours coffee first. No coffee. Ever or just first? You know, I try to just bring caffeine in my life when I here and there. I don't want to rely on it. So I like, uh, you know, let my natural circadian rhythm sort of wake up. And um, I take my dogs out for a walk. I might, I haven't had coffee yet. I've just been drinking wa- like a mineral water in the morning. Um, so that's what I, I, I'll drink in the morning. And then I, I'll probably bring in, I think the best time to bring coffee is not right away. I think you should wait a little bit. Um, I would say at least like nine, 10 o'clock. So perfect. Nine o'clock my time. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think, and, and I, I notice oftentimes for me, the days I'm like, okay, I need my coffee right away. It's lack of sleep where, you know, I got a decent night of sleep last night. Just didn't you know. So now I don't feel like I needed my coffee. I just, I enjoy when I have a conversation with someone, you know, drinking that coffee. So yeah. Other than getting to bed earlier, any tips on that? Any tips on sleep? Yeah, tips on sleep. Uh, making sure you're uh, well. You want to have a sound sleep routine, um, and that should start. I would say one to two hours before you go to bed. Um, if you could stay, I mean, you know, this is all over. But if you could all over the web and stuff, it's a hot topic. But obviously, stay off devices as much as you can. You know, if you got to put on some blue blockers. Um, to t- get out the blue light. I'll tell you one thing I've been doing with my wife, which is just a great activity. Um, and that's not what you're thinking. It's something else. Uh, <laughs> um, I, it came out, um, we've been meditating. Um, so she's not a very spiritual person and I've, I've done meditation on and off through the years, but I was like, when is the best time to do it? I don't think there is a perfect time to do it, but we've been doing it. I actually really enjoy doing it. We've been doing it at night. Um, not long meditations, like we started with five minutes. Now we're up to 10 minutes. And um, I think it's just a great way to sort of disconnect and get you out of like your your mode of just overthinking about everything that you have to do and your to-do list. Um, and it's just sort of a nice activity to do together. I mean, we just sit there in the dark and and we I've, tr- I've been trying to find some guided meditations. There's a few apps I've been using. Uh, so it's been, that's a great way to sort of wind down uh, before you go to bed. Yeah, you should check out TM. Have you looked into it? TM, no. Transcendental meditation. Okay, there's so, so many. It's, it's yeah. Like... I mean, that's kind of like, I mean, there's yeah, there's I, I mean, meditation is meditation, right? But right, you know, there's there's definitely, you know, TM has been around for quite some time. I would I would check that out. Um, that's I what I do. My, my, my mentor turned me on to it. You take a little course. It's just, just a little bit of a, di- a different protocol, but Hey, anything is good. I think, and I think something you said there is really valuable and important people when they t- want to try something new, they're like, okay, I need, I need to do it perfectly. I need to do it right. And I need to do all the things. And it's like, Hey, just sit down for five minutes mm-hmm. and get started. That's, that's what you need to do. And, you know, five will turn into 10 and 10 will turn into 20. I'm, I'm guilty of that as well. So, so, you know, another place in your life that I want to chat about where I think you see similar kind of um, issues is intermittent fasting. What's that? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's your kind of go-to, right? That's your, that's your big, big uh, focus in life or at least in coaching. Yes. Yes. I mean, it, it definitely started out and it's still a big part of my life. And, um, the, when I coach, um, individuals, um, but I have learned, I think a little bit through my fasting journey that, you know, you, you, some people can actually overdo it. And, um, in this, in you know, your community, which is a, a, a CrossFit community, obviously with very difficult workouts and, um, you know, maybe could tend to have higher cortisol levels and things like that. And, and then if you add in fasting, which is another stressor, 
Um, so I think you, I think the, there's, these are all good stressors and like, you know, cold plunges and infrared saunas, but I think there is a point where you can overdo it. And that's where, like we were talking before we went on is no getting some blood work done and understanding what your levels are at. Um, and because you might not realize it right away, but I think it's important that you have some type of benchmark that, you know, maybe you're running too high and you, you have too many of these stressors going on, but yes, fasting, I think is a great tool. I think it's, it can be used for almost everybody, but you just got to be careful not to have too many of these stressors and, um, and have some balance as well. So how would you tell someone, obviously yeah, getting some blood work done and, and doing that is vital. You asked me, cause I was wearing an inside tracker shirt who I recommend, you know, if, if anyone's interested, certainly hit us up, we could, we can set you up with them. But what are some indicators that you'd say you're doing too much? So you know, everything you mentioned is, is stuff that I do. My, my fasting pretty much every day is a 24, meaning I fast about 20 hours and I have my eating window in that four hours. Oftentimes that looks more like two to three hours just by the, you know, I try to eat in that five to nine window that five usually gets pushed back or the nine gets bumped up. So what, what's too much? Well, I guess it depends on the individual and the activity level and what they've done in the past. I mean, I think too much is when, you know, maybe you've had a bunch of hard workouts and, you know, that might be a time where you don't need to do some longer fasts or 20, 20 hour fast, which is not necessarily considered long for some people. I would say my window, I I've changed it through the years, but I'm about the same. I, I, I try to actually push for two meals a day. Um, you know, one meal a day for me, uh, I, it's just, I, especially if you're really active, just tough to get that much protein in within that certain period of time sometimes. Sure. So, <clears throat> but I do, challenge. yeah, yeah, I do think it's good if, if, um, you know, if you've been doing fasting for a while to maybe just take a day where, or, or more than one day, but a, a day where you don't do any activity, maybe you do a light yoga meditation. It's like a recovery, at least a recovery day. And then you do maybe a longer fast. And then you have other days where maybe you're a little bit more active and you can bring, you know, introduce a little bit more. I don't know. I, I, last time we talked, you were like full on carnivore. I used to, I, is that, uh, something you're still doing? You were eating liver and, um, yeah, no, I would say, I would classify myself these days as uh, meat based. You know, everybody yeah. likes to be plant-based. That's kind of the go-to wording, you know, you know, they're not vegan, they're not vegetarian, they're plant-based. I would say I'm meat-based. And I think in, in both scenarios, the what that it would be defined at is as 80% or so is still straight up meat. What I what I have done is I've tried to add more varied sources. So I'm not only eating steak. I've incorporated quite a bit of fish. I got my blood work done you know, like we were chatting about and yeah. my cholesterol went up a bit, um, nothing like crazy concerning, but enough that my wife Roz was like, no, you need to make, you know, and Roz has her nutrition degree and all this stuff. So she was like, nope, we're making changes. And, you know, everything was great that it was probably the best my blood markers have been, or, you know, ever between my triglycerides, my, you know, sugar levels, everything. So, I was really pleased with it, but I'm a big fan of uh, Dr. Paul Saladino, carnivore, uh, the carnivore MD. And, you know, he started incorporating a little more fruits and not vegetables, more fruits. And I, I've mean, done that. And I, I would call it like the Mediterranean paleo, if that, if, if that <laughs> means it. And I would say, what I mean by that is, you know, fish and, and chicken and stuff like that. And then I'll, I'll throw on my plate sun-dried tomatoes, artichoke hearts, uh, olives, thing, you know, yeah. things like that. But, but yeah, overall. Uh, and I'll tell you what I've been implementing um, that I'm really enjoying and, and uh, for like maybe like a lunch or, a, you know, like a later lunch, whatever, wild caught like cold water fish. So like the smash family, like sardines, mackerel, anchovies, salmon, uh, herring. Anchovies, I, I eat a probably a tin every every other day yeah i can tell you what i love eggs with anchovies on yeah them. you know actually that's the one that i just named that i haven't gotten into but i have gotten into sardines mackerel salmon and herring but I, 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 
<laughs> you're lying on our podcast, Brian. You're lying to us. How are we to trust you anymore if we don't know. even give you I'm, anchovies? Well, I'm not lying. I was making suggestions. I actually have had anchovies, but it's probably not up there of, of these five. But I actually think I might start implementing it again. Herring, um, herring's great, too. I mean, I grew up in a Jewish you know, household. Yeah. Herring oh, was yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I've been eating herring quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Not, no, yeah. I was just going to say not in the, you know, some of it's like a cream based herring. This is just, um, it's just in like vinegar and salt. It's yeah. You can't, yeah. The cream based herring is what my grandma used to buy, but <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll throw like, I'll do, um, you know, we go to Costco and I'll get some smoked salmon. Um, and you know, yeah. put that yeah. in your eggs, obviously. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, so you would recommend, training days, maybe eating a slightly bigger window. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good way to balance it out. And, um, I've been messing around. I like, do you, I've just question for you. Do you do your workouts in a fasted state? Yeah, I would say 90% of the time. I mean, yeah. like I said, I wake up six, seven, just depending, you know, on, on the morning and, my workout times vary day to day, you know, I squeeze them in, but my eating window is typically five to nine. And I do it for a few reasons. One, I love just not having to think about, and you know, right. one less thing to consider all day, you, you know, I've never worked in an office, but you know, I'm sure there's like, Hey, where are we ordering food from? What do you want, Johnny? Like who's buying it today? And it's like, I don't have to think about that. Right. I think about it, come around five o'clock. I have an idea of what I'm going to eat. We, you know, I might take some meat out of the freezer, you know, a freezer out in the garage because we bought a cow. Um, oh, congratulations. <laughs> I'm buying a cow. You bought a cow and you had a kid. Big, yeah, big. All yeah. in one year. Wow. Mazel tov. <laughs> Mazel tov. <laughs> so, is it, is it a kosher that, cow? Um, you, you know, I don't know. I don't uh, know his spirituality. I don't know if the cow is Jewish or not. Um, okay. You know, it, it, I, I haven't gotten to all the meat, so I'll tell you if he was circumcised. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, I think um, so. It, you know, take some meat out, and and the other aspect of fasting that I like about it is, I I've said this numerous times over the years. Like I'm chubby by nature, you know, I'm a fat kid at heart, and me eating earlier just means I'm eating more today. Like if I if, if I if you say, hey Jay, open up your window, meaning eat from two to nine today, I'm going to eat the same amount of food I'm already eating from five to nine, but now just more. Right. Which isn't healthy mentally more than uh, physically. Yeah. One thing I've noticed too, I don't, you know, I've tried to bring my eating window a little bit earlier and earlier and be done eating. Um, Cause I actually find I've, this happened a few times. If I eat, even at it's like eight o'clock um, or seven 30, um, just going to bed around 10, 10, 30, it's too close. And, you know, that's when like heartburn and things like that can come into play. And, um, I do, I do, I will say, I like going for a walk after, after meals. I think that's a great, like, I don't know if it's a hack, but just a simple tip, um, to help with digestion and blood sugar levels and things like that. Yeah. I think, you know, how do you balance though? This is where I struggle in life. Knowing all of these things, you like, I can lay out what a perfect day of health looks like, <laughs> right? And you're laughing because I know you probably think very similarly. It's like, okay, I went to bed at 10. I woke up at 6.30. I went for, I drank 32 ounces of water. You know, <laughs> I, I did this, that, you know, like one of the things you say, go for a, a 10 minute walk. I think it's Stan Efferding that I've heard talk about that a lot where, you know, just get your body digesting and all that stuff. How do you balance that? Like I get mad sometimes at, at my either uh, clients or friends or family where I'm like, you're messing up everything I need to do today. But it's like, they don't realize it. So the question is, how do we balance what having a life and being a, like a, a... <laughs> yeah, like I was thinking about it this morning. I was like, like I said, I was frantic and I'm like, I got to talk to Brian. Like I'm going to have a really good day. Like later today, we're going to go to the lake. And it's like, right. So what if everything wasn't, magical yeah i mean i think for me like a a, a a perfect healthy day is um 
like you really, I don't, how can I answer this? Um, I think you just got to do a little bit at a time. And even if like, I have a morning routine and I don't always do every single thing in that morning routine, you know, write in my journal, maybe play a musical instrument for 10 minutes, do 10 minute, like yoga movement prep, uh, go for a walk, read a book. Like these are things that I would love to hammer out, but realistically it doesn't happen every day. But if I do, you know, three out of the five and, you know, some days do five out of the five, some days I probably do one out of the five. I think you just got to, you know, it, do your best. And, and even if it's one thing, and I think that's what, you know, that's most important is just take one thing, do that, get used to putting it, whether it's going for a walk or reading a book, implement that first. And then once you get that down, then you can start adding on to that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you make a valid point. Like for me, it's always like, well, if I don't do everything, today was a failure. Right. But, it, you know, do a couple of the things. And, and I think also have the anchors. Like for me, exercise and nutrition is the anchor. Right. You know, I'm like, okay, at a minimum, I didn't eat like an asshole today. Like I fasted, I ate within my window. I got some sort of movement in. Most days it's a workout in the garage. Some days it's jujitsu or a walk. But it's like you moved your body. Um, and, and then the other stuff is just bonus. Yeah. And I, and I also say this is like, uh, this, I have a coach for my business. You talked about coaches and being an entrepreneur. So actually I have a, I have a call with him after this, we talk once a week, but, um, one of the things he stressed was what find the, the, the main things that are going to move your business in the right direction and do those right away. Now, I will say I, that doesn't always happen for me, but I have it written to do that every day. Those, for, those two, those two things. And if I do those things, then, you know, technically I can call my day a success because those are the biggest levers that will move my business or my health or my life, whatever that is in the right direction. I, I love that. And I think that's something, you know, we coach affiliates and, you know, I think for one, it's important for the listeners to hear, like you have two long-term successful entrepreneurs in Brian and I, not bragging, but I mean, we've been at this game a very long time in the fitness world. And most likely if you're listening to this, you're, you have some one or two toes in the fitness world. And I think it's important just to remind like people, Hey, we go through the same struggles. Like we're not perfect. And I would, I would go as far as saying neither are the Jockos and Gary V's out there. They just, you know, I don't know. I don't follow them, you know, everything they do. Maybe they put out some of the, their setbacks and failures, but it's important to hear that. But you know, it's funny, like whether it's your coach or Doug or Rob Wolf or my mentor, like it's all the same stuff. Like every time I read, I'm like, Oh, a new book came out. I'm like, okay, I read this book 15 times. <laughs> Just now it has a different, you know, I picked up tiny habits. Uh, I think BJ Fogg is the author. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, okay, this is the same book I read called the atomic habits. And the same book I read before that about like the miracle morning. Like it's like all the, it's all on repeat. Right. Everyone's to some degree copying from everyone else. It's just recycled material set in a different way. Uh, but sometimes you got to read it and hear it that many different times in order to actually implement it into your life. And it's like, yeah. So um, it's like, yeah, well, I was going to compare it to golf, but we don't need to go down that road. Well, well what's, I don't, you know what? Cause you're, <laughs> you're, you're an avid golfer. You're a golf coach, right? I am. I am. Yeah. How'd you get involved in golf? I mean, my, my dad got me involved early on in golf. I wasn't actually nowadays kids are starting like when they're like two, but I was at like 12 years old and I just loved it and just worked at it for a while, played in high school, played in college. And now I just coach, I actually, I coach a high school team in the area and, um, and I just still play in tournaments. It's just a big part of my life. So what's your best round ever? 68. On a well, that, that's good. That's 68. Good. I've shot 68 a couple times to this year. I shot 69. Um, yeah. So I'd like to have more rounds in the 60, but golf, I could talk about golf. I could do a podcast. I actually was thinking about doing a podcast on golf and life. Cause you, it, they, they really run parallel, but so, anyways, yeah. but no, no, I, I'm, I'm interested because <laughs> one thing that I've really benefited from and going back to kind of what we were talking about, first of all, something you said that's important and I don't want to overlook it for the, for the affiliate owners and coaches, you know, the idea of like eat that frog, right? Brian Tracy or whatever, like your, your, your mentor, your business coach said, it's like tackle the big thing in the morning. Right. You're fresh, you're awake. 
uh, you, you, you know, as the day goes on, more distractions are going to happen. And, and I think going back to what we said about meditation, that big thing is not as big as you think, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure your coach says the same thing. Like, Oh, I need to revamp my website. Yeah. That's not tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, what pages do I want? I'll, I'll work on that today. What's my about page going to say, who are my, you know, which podcast do I want to spotlight. It's, it's never do this entire project. So we always tell people like find the next, the thing that's going to move the needle is a great expression and then break that down to whatever time you can commit on a day. And it's like meditation, you know, you know, there's the Buddhist expression of like, if you, if you don't have five minutes to meditate, you need an hour. But at the same time, mm, my attitude like is like, if you don't have five minutes, find a minute, like find that's what tiny habits is really all about. Like three breaths. What's the least you can do to feel like you were successful. Okay. Well, I can sit down and take three breaths or, I want to begin intermittent fasting. I can skip, I can push breakfast back one hour. Right. Et cetera. Um, yeah. But where I was going is the other thing is I've learned over the last, especially in since the pandemic is this idea of stay in your lane. So, and what I mean by that is mm. I'm, you know, as entrepreneurs, I think it's really easy to have your hand in like 20 different buckets. Cause there's always that fear of like, well, this bucket's going to dry up and what's going to happen. And this one, you know, and, and really the last year or two, I've really gotten like, Hey, my 10,000 hours is in coaching. I love helping other affiliate owners. Uh, and we launched affiliate you. And, and now it's like everything I do has that in mind. Yeah. I do a handful of other things, but my, my question to you is knowing your, you know, your golf background, why don't you decide, hey, this is my, like, you could be the world renowned, the expert in, you know, golfing and fasting or golfing and fitness. What, what stops you from going so niche like that? Well, I mean, you know, when I started out down on the couch, Brian, this is the time <laughs> where we can dig in. It's your mom, by the way. It's all yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, my niche initially was, it was into fasting, you know, now my niche has been, I've been helping, let's just say 40 plus year old males, you know, get their body back. You know, I doing with the podcast and with coaching and I've actually noticed I implement, I have a six month program and it was, it was interesting. I was just looking at it today and seeing if I wanted to tweak it here and there, but, and I'm finding is a lot of these 40 plus males they're into golf. And, and I'm like, it's not part of my program, but, I, but adding in some type of golf mobility or something into that program, I think would be advantageous to, to my clients. So yeah, I, I don't know if that answers your question, but yes, I mean, you know, golf's a part of my life just cause I've played it for so long. Do I want it, you know, and, and I've coached individuals in it as well. But, um, but like you said, you got to sort of stay in your lane. I mean, I wrote a kid's book, like yeah, the what's it called the magic bus, the magic, the magic. Oh, close the magic zoo, the magic zoo. All right. And I never, you know, I did it more so just because I, I, my nieces and nephews, I thought it, they're they're characters in the book. I'm like, oh, this will be really cool. But then, you know, I realized I said, well, am I going to focus on kids' books or am I going to focus on health? Like that's like, and uh, well, and I, do, I, um, I have a goal. It's written. It's a kid's book about health, but I've never done it. Oh. I'll have to ask you offline. Yeah. With the next yeah. step. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It was great. I went around the element. I was like, you know, if you ever want to feel famous, write a kid's book, go to around to elementary schools and like literally you're signing books and people are taking your picture. <laughs> you know, you feel like you're like LeBron I, James. <laughs> For, I, re I, I, rem I remember that when we read a book, it was called They Caged the Animals at Night. Do you remember that book? I don't know. I'd have to see it. Was, it. Yeah. It, was like, it was like a pretty thick, like sixth grade, like not like mm. a kid's book. Like, and the author came in. It was like this old guy. Oh, was, yeah. oh, my God. That's the guy that wrote this book. And it was like, we're take, I remember like we all had <laughs> pictures with him. Yeah. I'm, you know what? I, I want to be famous amongst the, you know, four to seven year olds. So I went right. to this kid's book. Exactly. It is sort of a cool experience, but yes, if you want to have sort of that feel like a famous or I, celebrity, yeah. I do want to make sure that the listeners heard, you know, if, if you are, you know, I'm sure you go to thirties and fifties as well, but if that's your demographic and, and you're looking for that and, and maybe even like you, you're like, Hey, I golf hit Brian up. Like definitely 
definitely check him out, BrianGrin.com. Um, and I'm sure all the all the social medias, but but definitely um, reach out to him because you know you've been around and in this game for for quite some time. Um, yeah. So ch- check that out. Thank you. I, I wanted to ask you. So we, we talked a little bit about intermittent fasting. What are some of the first steps you would tell someone to do? Well, you mentioned it already. I think if you've never done fasting start small, right? So, um, if you normally eat at seven 38 o'clock, let's just say, push it back an hour and do that for, I don't know, you could do that for as long as you want to do it. I guess I would say do it for at least a few days to a week. Once you get the hang of that, you could just keep pushing it back. And I think that's like a good first step. Um, also to, you know, people it's like, what comes first? Should I clean up my eating or should I start with fasting? I mean, if you're eating pretty clean right now and you want to sort of take it to the next level, I think fasting will do that. But if you're eating like the standard American diet, I think it might make sense to clean that up a little bit first before you uh, get into fasting. Uh, Cause it'll make when you clean up your eating and, and you're eating, you know, quality proteins and high quality fats, um, it makes uh, uh, fasting that much easier. Yeah. I, I have a hard time with people beginning fasting. I notoriously lack empathy. That's something I'm working on um, <laughs> every day. But people are like, I can't do it. I'm hungry, blah, blah. And I'm like, you're fine. Like, you, I, you know, that was my nice way of being like, shut up. You don't need food. You're 50 pounds overweight. Like, you're, you think your body doesn't have fuel? Like, I have fuel. I do it. And I'm, you know, relatively lean. I think growing up wrestling, I mean, I was 13 going two or three days without eat, like literally eating an orange for, for my entire day. And like my parents were either didn't realize or weren't smart enough to, to yell at me that this Mm. is healthy, but I think that kind of carries over, you know, and I think one of my favorite aspects of intermittent fasting is that mental toughness. Like what's going to happen when, you know, it's the same thing I said, um, on a recent post also, I'm like, if you need a belt and knee sleeves to deadlift, what happens when you have to deadlift something in the real world? And it's the same thing with intermittent fasting. Like what happens when you don't have a meal nearby? Like, are you going to be hangry and cranky or are you going to be like, okay, I'm okay. I'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, there is something to be said about like sort of sitting in your hunger a little bit and just like embracing it. I think there was a time where I used to you know, any inkling of hunger, I'd grab like a kind bar. I remember, I think I overdosed on them, um, literally, but, um, it's healthy in it, right? What's that? You, you know, we all have those like, Oh, this is healthy. It's like, oh, this is a granola bar with chocolate. Like, <laughs> <you know? laughs> exactly. Now, not they're They're not all created equal, right? There are some better, sure. I guess. Right. But, but yes. Um, but so I think you make a point, a good point in the sense that you just, you do want to sort of you, the, the hunger waves, will, will come and go. You will write, you just got to sort of sit in it a little bit and ride it out. But two, if you're, if you've always been like very carb dependent and not used to getting into obviously a lot, you know, not used to using your own body fat stores for energy, that's when that hangry can come into play. So that's why I was saying, if you start to try to just clean up your eating a little bit, that will help those, you know, those hunger pains and help you sort of get through those moments where it's a little more difficult. For sure. And, you know, carnivores help with that because no. you know, I think when you minimize your carbs, specifically processed carbs, which I think most people understand. And I'm sure on the Rob Wolf episode, he, he expressed this. It's like when, when you develop that metabolic flexibility, flexibility, like Mark Sisson talks about, um, right. you, you, you don't really feel that hunger. I don't ever, the only time I've felt hungry in the last you know, month or two, I did a 36 hour fast, which, became like 48 hours, just like I said, because life happens. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I got a little hungry, more so around bedtime. And I think, again, that was more mental. Like, I usually eat now, and I'm not. Your body's like, what's going on? But sure. you, I was fine. And then you, I woke up, and I can't... The most energy I've ever had is when I'm in the middle of like some two to five day fasts. Yeah. The five day fast I did a little over a year ago. Like day three, I was like, I'm never eating again. Because I'm like, like I had so much, first three days, you're in it. And then all of a sudden, you're like, body's like a breakthrough. I think, what do you think about this as someone in this nutrition space? 
somewhere in the last two to 10 years, this misconception has arose that it's supposed to be easy to lose weight. In other words, I think because of macros, I think because of all these kind of fad diets, there's like this idea like, okay, if I cut this out or do this, I'll lose weight. And then people like don't understand. No, it's supposed to be challenging. Like I, I have some clients, I have some friends, I've seen people that are like, you know, well, uh, here's a, here's an example. Okay. Well, I usually eat, um, cookies. What can I put in substitute for cookies? If I'm not going to eat cookies and I'm like, how about nothing? Like, why do you need a substitute? Like, how about you just either don't eat at that point, or instead of trying to find a quote unquote paleo alternative or like a healthy alternative, you have a peach or you have a handful of cashews. Like, do you, do you, do you, have you seen that? Or is this just me being angry? <laughs> have I seen it tough for people to lose weight? Well, no, definitely that, but more so this idea that like, oh, and I, I think I was a part of it. Like you do macros and you saw me, like when we first met, it was like cinnamon toast crunch, mac and cheese. But even then it's like, it's not easy. Like I'm still weighing and measuring. I'm still not eating as much as I want. Like you're still in a caloric deficit. I just think somewhere along the way, people got this notion of like, okay, it's easy. Like I'll, I'll do that too. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think the most important thing is do something that is sustainable that you could do for a long time. You know, I think doing something for a couple of weeks can be somewhat easy, right? But doing that and making it a lifestyle change, that's a whole different thing. And that's why I think we were going back to what we were talking about before. It's so important to have an accountability partner. That's not your family member. That's a third party. That's going to make sure that keeps you on track because, you know, if you're, whatever, let's say you're 50 years old and you've been doing the same thing. I mean, I see this with my clients who are 6, 50, 60, 70 years old. They've been having the same, eating the same foods for a long time. It is not that easy to get, to make those changes. They have to really dig deep and decide, well, why am I actually doing this? You know, and a lot of people, unfortunately, wait till maybe a health scare comes or, or, you know, they, they, they fail a stress test. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's important to have a driving why I think that it, it, it you know, I, that, you know, there's all the health tips in the world can, I, you can give someone and, and, um, it, it'll be, it'll be that much more difficult if they don't know the real reason why they, they really want to lose weight or gain energy or whatever it is. I think that's interesting. That's, you know, I talked about Doug earlier. That's what we kind of dug into yesterday in our grad program, not so much about the health of why, but you know, why you do this thing, you know, we, we, as a box owner, a CrossFit affiliate owner, it's easy to be like, oh, I want to help people lose weight or I want to help them get fit. And it's like, why? You know, and, and, a, and a drill that Doug recommended and I've done it with him and maybe you've done it as well as asking yourself why five times. Right. You know, peel, and, the, peel the onion. <laughs> yeah. And it's like when it starts to get hard, like that's when the whys are coming out. So definitely check that out um, if, if you've never done it. And again, it's just one of those things, you know, I heard it from Doug he's heard it from somebody else and it's getting regurgitated up. But on that note, other than the magic zoo, what book would you recommend <laughs> the listeners check out? Oh, it's a good question. Um, you know, the, it's this, I think can go uh, run across uh, business health, whatever it's called the one thing. Oh, I love that. That's a mm. great book. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I have it somewhere here, but I love it. And it's a book that I always come back to because it just sort of, you know, takes all the distractions away and, and helps you sort of focus on, you know, the one thing that'll actually move your business or your health. And I, it's just, a, yeah, it's a, it's a solid book. You know, definitely highly recommend the one thing and the magic zoo five star reviews on Amazon, by the way. Oh yeah. Did you know that? Best selling. Yeah. New York times bestseller <laughs> magic zoo. Uh, reading age four to eight. So right in my, uh, perfect, right in my wheelhouse. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Um, hey, you know what, when you're, when your uh, boy gets, uh, gets of age, let me know. Girl, but yeah, girl. I, I will okay. Definitely, uh, I'll send you a signed version. How about that? That'd be great. That would make her day. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have like every Dr. Seuss book, but, uh, we oh, have well. Brian, Brian Grin book. So we will, uh, 
all of his are getting banned. I think that's what you need to do. You need to write a controversial kids book. Oh, and then they go back and they buy all the originals. So then the, all of a sudden the magic zoo would spike. Is uh, his books are getting banned? From what I understand, I mean, I don't follow oh. like any news, but I, don't, yeah. I specifically don't follow kids authored news. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I think like what's there's that one. I'm sure the listeners know the one I'm talking about. I wanted to say like lemmings, but it's not lemmings. I forget the oh. name, I forget what it is, but he's you know probably yeah. back in the day whatever he said was acceptable, and now it you know not right. so much. So. You know, in, in 50 years, you're, you're going to get canceled, too, for whatever you said in the magic zoo. I'm sure there's something, you know, you mentioned something about a giraffe and, you know, people with long necks are going to be very upset with you one day. Yeah, so, that could happen. But I do want people to check out not just your book, but check out your site and, and all the other good stuff. Is there anything else you, you would want the listeners to know about you other than your round of 68, which, by the way, what was the par on that? 72? One time it was a, yeah, 72 and it's, I've done it on 70 as well. So I mean, I could shoot 68 on like nine holes, I'm sure, but <laughs> right. What's the par, right? Yeah. yeah it's it's a, what's What's the hardest course you've ever played on? Oh, um, uh, East coast black, black wolf run. Where's that? It's in, um, uh, Farmingdale, New York. Oh, Long Island. Yeah. Wait, wait. Yeah. Long Island. Not black. Oh my God. No. Yeah, the, they had the U.S. Open out there. Why am I? It's not Black Wolf Run. Did you play in the U.S. Open? No, I never played in the U.S. Open. Um, now you got me thinking. Why? Why is this course? Um, Google it. Google it, Brian. What? Yeah. Um, it's in Farmingdale. Anyways, yeah, it's New York. Yeah. Um, they had the U.S. Open. Oh, uh, Beth Page Black. Oh God. Oh, Beth Page New York. I got a lot of friends from Beth Page actually when I went to school in new york yeah a lot of people come from there had you know golfing is like a three four hour endeavor right i think that's been the issue with golf and getting juniors involved is that it just takes it takes a long time it's time well, since you know i've got a couple of buddies here that play a lot in the summer in colorado and they invite me and i'm like if i have four hours there's a lot more things i'd rather like i have no doubt it's fun i have a hard time spending four hours in the, you know, quote unquote fitness world, not actually getting fitter. Right. And like, you know, it's like no different than my partner, you know, Fern loves shooting guns. He's not getting fitter, but it's a hobby. So I guess it's okay. But for me, like hobbies, like jujitsu, I'm learning a skill, but I'm also getting healthier. And then right. yes, walking 18 holes is great for you carrying, you know, a heavy, uh, you know, ruck basically. But um, yeah, I think that's, that's, you know, every sport has their challenge, like wrestling's challenges. You want high school boys to show up in a singlet to fight each other. Like, mm -hmm. all right, how about we throw them in some, you know, board shorts and a rash guard and wrestling will spike. See, so, yeah, I'm sure, but there's no way to speed up golf. Is there? Yeah. Play nine holes. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, you'll see courses nowadays. They make, they have bigger holes. So it take, doesn't take as long. Like the actual um, hole the ball goes yeah, in. Yeah. 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 Like basketball net. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really? Well, that's yeah. just coming down the sport, isn't it? I guess, but it can be fun. I I I did it one time where they put like really tough pins and then they made the holes like the size of maybe a basketball uh hoop. Um, but yes, I mean, I think it golf 18 holes is four hours probably it should be, you know, three and a half to four hours. And sometimes, you know, especially watching high school golf, it could be five hours. <laughs> so I think it just depends on the course and the level, the ability level of the players. You say you coach high school golf. Yeah. What's, you know, I've only ever coached high school wrestling, but you have the opportunity to like beat on the kids. Like, okay, you want to do that? We're going to, you know, how, how do you punish golfers? Like, Oh, you got to, uh, you can make them do push ups. <laughs> you can still do that stuff. Uh, how do you punish them? I mean, you don't play them maybe in the next event if they do something wrong or, you know. What is it like? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of skill that, you know, it's one of those things where when you understand the sport better, you understand, like, okay, we're going to do, you know, we're going to practice with our seven irons today. We're going to practice with our nine irons. Is that, what, mm -hmm. Is there a lot of drilling or is golf a sport where it's like, okay, welcome to practice. We're playing 18 holes. I think it's a combination. I think it's a combination of playing and then just developing skills 
maybe it's on the range or in putting or chipping. So it's a combination of both. If you find like, Hey, this is the group of kids that struggle with the chip shots versus the drivers and, you know, different than kids that like top game and wrestling versus being, you know, versus stand up. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. And then we work a lot of game management and mental, you know, golf's very, it can be a very mental game. So yeah, folks, especially at that age, like how do you, like they do, do they check their phone in between holes? Like, how do you handle that? How do you mitigate that? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, yeah, I mean, we, I would say, you know, actually sometimes I think kids have an advantage mentally because they, they just haven't been around the game as much and they have less scar tissue. You know, when you play for 20 years, you've seen everything <laughs> and it's like, you know, you've missed putts that are two feet. And, you know, when you're a kid starting out, you, you know, they say putt like you're a kid because you don't care. You don't give a, you don't, you know, you just, and so I think there's a pros and cons to both. Gotcha. All right. Last question. Yeah. You grew up in Chicago, Illinois, right? Chicago. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just North. Which is the spot? Luminati's or Giordano's? God, this is on a health podcast. Um, Luminati's, Luminati's. Um, yeah, just because I, I had it, I've had it, I've had it more. I haven't had pizza in so long. So, um, where do you live right now? I'm just, I'm, I'm north of the city. I'm in Deerfield. Um, it's about 30 minutes north of the city. When you say the city, New York City, Chicago. Oh, you're up. The city is, come on, that's Manhattan. I, I thought you had, I thought you had left Illinois. No, I'm still here. Oh, cool. Well, most okay. people, so, but most people have left. <laughs> I mean, it's, you've lived there your whole life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're in Colorado, right? Yeah, I'm in Colorado now. When you when we met originally, I was in Florida, but yeah. I grew up in you know New York and spent my entire life there. Chicago's way colder. Yeah. Like, bitter freaking cold, right? Yeah. It is. I mean, it's definitely colder than New York, but it's so, not as cold as Minnesota. But yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> so you haven't had pizza in, in a long time? Long time. Why? I mean, neither have I for the record, but what's your reason? I just don't, you know, my wife and I, we eat pretty healthy. We eat either fish or meat every night, I would say. Um, and so we just haven't, we have no desire to bring pizza into the mix because I just, I'll probably be on the, of how I've, I probably won't feel so good. That's, you know what? That's where I'm at with it. It's not a matter of anything other than, yeah. Like, okay, if I eat, like, that's, I think that's a great place to be with your nutrition and we can, we can wrap it up there. But I think you get to the point with your nutrition where it's not even a decision because you're dialed in. And I'm like, I can eat some pizza. It will mess my guts up for three days. Okay. And, and, the 15 seconds or 15 minutes even of enjoyment is not worth it anymore. That's and, it. I, that's why I don't. Yeah. That's, that's the reason I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have some sweets here and there just for, you know, but I, I, I definitely ha cannot have a lot of any of that stuff because it'll just, I'll just will not feel good. Yeah. I think people should understand that. Like if you can eat that stuff consistently, that's your body telling you, Hey, you give me enough of this that I tolerate it. Right. Instead of like, fine tuning it. I, you know, we don't have to go down and I know we got to wrap up, but I just feel like, Hey, you got one body, take care of it, do some healthy things. You don't have to be perfect. Like we've discussed, but, but just move that needle in the right direction for those that understand CrossFit, the continuum push from sickness to wellness to fitness. And we've mm -hmm. talked about it. Like the further we can push everything to fitness, the more hedge we have for when things do go poorly. So be prepared for that. Brian, it is always great catching up to you. I will hold you to that signed Magic Zoo book, though. Yes, for sure. Let me know. And uh, thanks for having me on. So you never miss an episode of the podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and on all major podcasting platforms at Best Hour of Their Day. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of the best hour of our day. See you next time.